Your Majesty, we'll pay whatever price you set for your goods. They are not for sale. Until the spiritual advancement of the West catches up to the technological prowess, it would be irresponsible to share our scientific discoveries with you. Are you calling everyone here irresponsible children? No. More like sullen teenagers who feel more mature than their behavior warrants. The fact that every conversation here is framed in terms of profit and power says it all. You could have made half these breakthroughs yourself. But there's too much money to be made in misery. Why cure a disease when people pay for medicine? Why provide cheap energy Yeah, we when... get the point, T'Chaka. <laughs> I've never met a socialist with a crown on his head before, but... I guess there is a first time for everything. Who gave you permission to use my first name? I am sorry. I did not mean to offend. I understand your frustration in dealing with a black man who can't be bought with a truck full of guns, a plane full of blondes, and a Swiss bank account. But please, hold on to what little class you have. Your Majesty, I truly apologize. This meeting is over. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, K-Fits My Life. So I want to do a video about three things that I think we as the black community can learn from the Black Panther movie. Those three things are, one, our modern day vibranium. Two, a connection to ancestral information. And three, duality. So let's jump in and start with number one, our modern day vibranium. So in the Black Panther universe, there was a meteor that crashes into Wakanda. The meteor contained vibranium, which is the most valuable mineral on Earth now. The Wakandans used that mineral to start their entire revolution. It's the basis of their technological superiority, their economic superiority, and their medicinal superiority. It basically catapulted them to the number one country in the entire world. Now, I know vibranium is not real, but is there something that could be the equivalent of it for the black community today? I think the answer is yes. And I think what it is, is money. Now, if you look at the analytics of the Black Panther movie, in its first four days, it brought in $218 million. And according to box office analysts, 37% of that came from black people. Now, I know that may sound low, but we have to remember that black people only make up 12 to 13% of the American population. So if you look at that and you take 37% of $218 million, that comes out to $88 million that the black community raised in only four days. Now, if you think about this, it shows that we do have economic power, but we're not pointing it in the right direction. Just think if we could come up with a calls once a month, and we didn't have to use four days out of the month, we could use an entire month. And every month out of a year, we donate that money to a different cause to improve the black community. At the end of the year, that will come out to almost a billion dollars that could be used to fund black medical research, um, new colleges and universities, new hospitals, new businesses, real estate for, for black people. It could fund so many things that could be useful to actually generate income and education and medicine and research and technological advancements that we as a black community could use to improve ourselves. So if we can raise $88 million in four days, I don't think we can use the, I don't think we can use the point that we don't have enough money to do things with. I think we have to follow what the Wakandans did. When they had something fall into their lap, they immediately learned how to mine it. 
They learn how to how it actually worked. And then they learn how to translate that into something that was useful for them to make them better than what they were. And it's the same with the black community and money. We have to learn how to mine it. We have to learn how it works. And then we have to learn how to use it in a way that will better the black community. There are so many things that we could do with money. We could also use it to help us in a political standpoint, because a lot of the things that happen in Congress are based on having enough money to get certain things passed. So if we were able to generate enough money, we could use it also to help us from a legal standpoint. So number one, I think our modern day vibranium is money. Now, the second thing I think we can learn from the Black Panther movie is that we need a connection to ancestral information. Now, I've talked to a lot of black people who have thought that it's not necessary for us to learn about our ancestry and our past, that that's not going to help us today. They don't think it's necessary. But I disagree with that statement. I think that if we want to elevate ourselves to the level of what our ancestors had achieved, then it would behoove us to learn how they started that civilization, how they got the civilization to, to rise to the level that it was, how they maintained that for so long, and also how they lost that. If we have any hope of getting to that point, we need to have information on how it happened. And the best way for us to do that is to learn from the information that our ancestors left us behind about what they did, our cultures, our practices, our religions, the way that we thought, the way our family systems worked, the things that we ate, <clears throat> One thing I noticed about other cultures that are here in America, say, just in my, where I live, say Mexicans, Asians, people from India, they may be here in America, but when a group of Mexicans are together, a lot of times they speak in their native languages. And there's also lots of cultural foods for them everywhere here in Nashville. Um, same with Asians, same with Indians. There are a lot of Asian foods here. A group of Asians usually get together, they speak in their native languages. If you go to a Chinese restaurant, they are speaking Chinese. Um, groups of Indians who are people from India who are here, they may speak English, but you, they still have their accent from their native languages. And when they get together, they speak in their la native languages. And they also have their cultures here with them. The difference between them and us as black people is that we were cut off from that information. But we can't really use the fact that we were cut off from that information as a reason to not learn about it anymore. Because this is the information age. And basically all of us walk around with the library of the entire world in our pockets at all times. So... We can no longer use the excuse that we don't have the information or access to the information because we have access to the information in our pockets. So we can't we can't use that as an excuse anymore. I know that a lot of people think it's not necessary, but at the same time, we've been going this long without trying it. We've been trying it the way we've been doing it. And it hasn't worked to the level that we all would like it to work. And we all know that the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expecting a different result. So maybe it's time that we thought, let's try something different. Maybe we need to connect with a little bit more information from our past so that we can see how to get where we want to go. So I think the second thing we really need is a connection to ancestry information. So the third thing I think we can learn from the Black Panther movie is about duality. Now, there's been a lot of talk on the internet about who was the better character, T'Challa or Eric Killmonger. But I think a lot of us are missing the point. America 
wasn't built with a T'Challa type character alone. And it wasn't built with an Eric Killmonger type character alone. The fact is, the only way America was built was there were times when there was a T'Challa needed and there were times when an Eric Killmonger was needed. Eric Killmonger could not do the things that T'Challa could do. And T'Challa could not do some of the things that Eric Killmonger was capable of doing. But America was still built and has become the most powerful country in the world based on the duality of both of those characters being in people that were needed to get America where it needs to be. Now, in that motion comic that I showed at the beginning of the clip, most people don't realize, but in 2011, BET made a motion comic of the Black Panther cartoon, and it also was a predominantly black cast. It starred Jaimon Hansu as T'Challa. Uh, it had Kerry Washington as Princess Shuri, T'Challa's sister. It had Alfre Woodard as Donde Reese, T'Challa's mother. And it had Jill Scott as Storm. Now, a lot of people may not know, but in the comics, Storm was the Black Panther's wife. So there was probably an issue with Storm from X-Men being in this movie because of copyright issues. But the Wakandans in the comics and in this motion comic were much more ruthless than they were in the movie toward the United States. As you saw with the way T'Chaka, T'Challa's father, talked in that clip that I showed at the beginning, he had a very low opinion of America and the Wakandans refused to allow any of their information and technology to fall into American hands. So I think the point is Wakanda, according to the comics and this motion comic, as I showed you, was more ruthless. They, T'Challa himself was more of the T'Challa from the movie and the Eric Killmonger from the movie mixed into one person which was what allowed him to be such an effective ruler of Wakanda in the comics. I would assume that Disney <laughs> wouldn't be able to put statements like what you saw at the beginning of this video in the movie um, because it wouldn't be friendly to an entire audience. I'm sure they want to make as much money as possible and make it as palatable to as many different people as possible. So I think the point is you can't form a strong nation with just one type of person, T'Challa or Eric Killmonger. Wakanda was built in actuality on a combination of both of those people. So I think the third thing that we can take from this movie is duality. We all need to have those two sides of us in order to get where we really want to be as a community. So what do you guys think? Do you think money could be compared to vibranium? Do you think we really need a connection with our ancestors? Do you think it's necessary to have a T'Challa or an Eric Killmonger type person both combined in order to get us where we need to be as, a, as, as the black community? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can see when I upload new content. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all on the next one, all right? Peace.